Hey everyone, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria. I have a Master's of Science in Human Nutrition and I specialize in metabolic health uh, so that I can help you build a high functioning metabolism that allows you to get and stay effortlessly slim, fit and healthy for life while eating as much carbohydrate as you want. So today's question is a bit of a loaded one. Uh, so we'll get right into it. What's one to make of the idea that excess glucose is actually toxic to cells, a term referred to as glucotoxicity, due to mitochondrial overload and possibly due to the intracellular limit to hold nutrients? So we're going to go ahead and separate fact from fiction here and just get right into the <laughs> definition of glucotoxicity. So it's a condition caused by long-term high blood sugar that can damage your beta cells and cause serious health problems. So it's basically untreated high blood sugar. Um, our beta cells, uh, they uh, create and release insulin, which helps to regulate our blood sugar levels. So glucotoxicity, <clears throat> uh, it is basically where you have <clears throat> the inability to clear this high blood sugar uh, from your blood, right? So insulin, resistance is going to be present in this case. So insulin is having a hard time clearing the sugar out of the blood. And because it is being overworked, the beta cells are being overworked, they basically get damaged in the process so then they can no longer create the insulin needed in order to manage the high blood sugar. So this is standard type two diabetes. So you go in and you, you know, find out that you have this condition, they put you on insulin and also recommend dietary intervention as well. So the thing, uh, let's get back into the question. Okay, so glucotoxicity is not something that directly affects our cells um, it, like where there is mitochondrial overload and intracellular limit to hold nutrients. That is a false concept, okay? What does happen though is a condition called um, diabetic ketoacidosis where because this sugar is not able to get into your cells and your cells need the sugar in order to generate energy, the cells start um, utilizing fatty acids and generating ketones for energy production. So the cell is sensing, hey, there's no glucose present. We need an alternative energy source to be created. So you have high blood sugar going on and you have ketoacidosis. And the two are a deadly combination. This is where you can get into, especially if it's unmanaged um, type two diabetes, and this condition is going on, where you can get into necrosis, which is basically um, cell and tissue death due to this combination of the high blood sugar mixed with the acid condition that develops from uh, ketogenesis being initiated during this glucotoxicity um, situation. So, uh, you know, you can learn a lot more information by just delving into, you know, type two diabetes. But to get to the elephant in the room, this is all being caused by insulin resistance, okay? So let's uh, pull up H.P. Hemsworth dietetic factors influencing the glucose tolerance in the activity of insulin. Okay, it is now established, and this is from PubMed, it is now established that the sugar tolerance is impaired by starvation or the taking of diets with a high fat content whilst it is improved by taking diets containing excess of carbohydrate. So what causes insulin resistance? Starvation, glucose starvation, and a high fat diet, okay? And insulin sensitivity is promoted with a low fat diet, no glucose starvation, and excess carbohydrate availability, okay? It's so very, very important to, you know, drill that into your brain that insulin sensitivity equals high carb, low fat. Insulin resistance equals high fat, low carb, okay? So there's the part two of this question here. 
Perhaps in relation to this, what if insulin resistance, so-called, is not a result of lipids coating the insulin receptor sites? Uh, it is. Neil Barnard determined this in his clinical research. He wrote a book <clears throat> called Reversing Diabetes. Okay, I'll put a link for that in the description of this video. What if insulin resistance is not a result of lipids coating the insulin receptor sites? I've yet to be fully sold on this idea because the fact of the matter is many carnivores and fat-based ketovores reverse type 2 diabetes, A1C, etc., but rather a protective mechanism of the cell to prevent itself from literally bursting from taking in too much nutrition. This, this doesn't happen. The, the of cell bursting from taking in too much nutrition. Our, we have a very tight regulation on that concept. What happens is everything backs up in the blood, causing the glucotoxicity. So it's not that the cells are able to take up all that nutrition. It stays in the blood if it can't make its way into the cell. Okay, and last part of the question here, carnivores and fat-based ketovores reversing type 2 diabetes. So I've talked about this prior. Basically, um, when you go on a low-carb diet, a carnivore, ketovore diet, <laughs> um, where you're uh, not eating any carbs or just low-carb and you're running on ketogenesis or ketoacidosis or ketosis, however you want to call it, um, your cells are acting in a starvation state, so they're generating ketones for energy production. We can only generate um, enough ketones to supply about 60% of our energy needs, so we have to still be generating glucose in this process in our liver um, called gluconeogenesis, and it's going to be coming from protein, protein that's coming in through the diet and protein that is you know, in your muscle tissue. So the reason why these diets initially lower blood sugar is because of the lack of carbohydrate in the diet. It's very, very simple. So on paper, it looks like, hey, this is working, right? But the, the cause of the insulin resistance is never being addressed. And if you take a glucose tolerance test, which is the gold standard for determining uh, whether you're insulin sensitive or insulin resistant, um, it's basically this really sugary drink that you drink and then they test your blood sugar, you know, generally prior to the test and then they test it about an hour afterwards um, to see <clears throat> what your level looks like, how well your body is able to process this sugar. And um, anybody who has been following a low carb, high fat, you know, glucose starved diet is going to fail this test because star glucose starvation and high fat diets promote insulin resistance. Okay, so, so this is a very basic concept and many times uh, people will fail on these carnivore, ketovore, <laughs> ketogenesis, ketosis diets because they still will end up having blood sugar issues, particularly if they're eating a lot of protein, because that protein is being turned into glucose. And it still has to, so this happens in the liver, and the liver has to transport that glucose via the blood to the cells that need the glucose in order to run. So when <laughs> that uh, sugar gets transported through the blood, um, if you're still dealing with insulin resistance and you're generating a lot of sugar through gluconeogenesis, you're going to still end up having blood sugar problems. And the main driver for uh, gluconeogenesis is cortisol. So when you're in a low carb state, a glucose starved state, you're still going to, you're going to be utilizing cortisol in order to drive gluconeogenesis or the creation of glucose from non-carbohydrate substrates. Uh, just hope that that makes sense. So cortisol will raise blood sugar levels um, in like during exercise, but also during gluconeogenesis and any time where you are experiencing um, uh, glucose starvation in your body. And that generally gets um, initiated by glucagon in the instance where your blood sugar is low. And glucagon is another hormone that gets produced by the pancreas. So glucagon is our um, hormone utilized to bring blood sugar back up when it's low and insulin is used to uh, lower blood sugar when it's high. So they work in tandem with each other because in order to uh, maintain homeostasis, 
within our body, we need to have a tight regulation of our blood sugar. Okay, so I hope that all makes sense. Again, glucotoxicity is simply high blood sugar being caused by insulin resistance initially, and then it can continue and cause damage and you know, untreated high blood sugar ends up being a major problem. People have lost limbs, toes, things like that. So um, in order to <laughs> avoid all of that, you simply want to be eating a diet that promotes insulin sensitivity and living a lifestyle that promotes insulin sensitivity. So going to bed early, getting enough sleep, drinking enough water, um, eating a high carb, low fat diet, avoiding... Um, uh, starvation diets, avoiding under eating on carbohydrates, and um, doing some exercise as well because exercise also lowers insulin needs. Okay, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I will um, check out your comments and questions that you leave down below. Uh, also check out the description of this video if you're interested in my coaching. I have a private coaching group. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I also wrote up a coaching program that explains everything metabolically that you need to know in regards to human nutrition and metabolism in order to get the results that you desire. Okay, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.